That game mower mic hair. Watch out. We're going hatless, so a little extra glare on the old noggin. Now, today we're going to talk about setting valve clearances specifically on this Kohler motor. Now, I have another video on how to do it on a Briggs, and it is a bit different on the Briggs versus the Kohler. They have different adjuster nuts, so pay attention. Now, valve clearances are the clearance between the rocker and the valve stems. You need to have a certain little bit of clearance in there, so that way on your compression, when that compressing all the air and the fuel and everything before it goes bang bang you want those valves to be shut in order for them to be shut these rockers can't be pushing down on there and they need to have a little bit of clearance so a lot of times when you're having hard starting and you just can't quite figure it out sometimes the valve clearances get off because they do loosen up on here so this is a good uh, good check you know almost maybe even once a year you can check them so first thing you do you take off the valve cover I'm not going to go into that, but on these colors, they do require silicone. On the Briggs, it's just a gasket. I always reuse the gaskets. So once you got them off, the first step before you check your valve clearances, don't just go start willy-nilly and in into it. We have to find top dead center of the motor. Top dead center is when that piston gets to the very top of that combustion chamber. And that's where that compression starts, or is. And that's where you need to have your valves totally shut and that's where you need to have your valve clearances so in order to do that take a very clean screwdriver and shove it down the hole and you can see my engine is very dirty and turn the top you turn the top you'll feel that piston go all the way up all the way down top dead center is when she's at the very top so you can see the valves go up and down up and down and you really want in the compression stroke and you'll know it's on the compression stroke because when you come up you see both those valves are not moving and you're at the top dead center right there. Now the other top dead center on the intake stroke, you can see they're moving around, moving around. So go on another stroke and come all the way back up to top dead center on the compression stroke and just make it where it's all the way out. And you'll feel when you're there because you'll have a little bit of wiggle room on both of those. And that is when we set our valve clearances or valve lash, however you want to say it. So to set your valve lash, what you want to do is you're setting the distance between here with your engine at top dead center because you want a little distance there. That way it's not prematurely pushing down these valves and then you would never have compression. Now in order to do that, your lock nut is the inside. So that there is a T20 and what you want to do, you want to loosen that up a little bit. That way you have room to adjust your valve lash. And the way you adjust your valve lash is with the half inch nut. So with that adjuster nut a little bit loose, go ahead and slide your 0 .005 uh, feeler gauge down between here. And you want to tighten it up till it's just not super tight, but you can feel resistance on both sides. Like that, right there. And once you have that, go ahead and take your wrench, which I seem to lose everything around here. It's in my lap. <laughs> and you want to hold that half inch nut. Hold it exactly where you set it because that, that is what is setting your valve lash. And then take your T20 and you tighten the nut on the inside. And you tighten it to 80 inch pounds, which is not very much force and there you go so remember the half inch nut adjust the valve lash here and then your little t20 nut here adjusts the it's the lock nut part so it seems very different but you can see there you got a good valve lash and go ahead and do both sides just before you do it make sure that your uh, your motor is at top dead center by sticking that clean uh, screwdriver down through there and you should be set it's now let's say for all my redneck buddies, you don't have a feeler gauge. I don't know your situation. Maybe you live in a meth house out in the woods and you can't get Amazon delivered. But there is another method uh, an old fella taught me years ago to check valve lashes, valve clearances. You can use da -da, a business card. Yes, this is my shameful promotion for smoking windmill barbecue. I'm really hoping Sean and Dennis gives me some free barbecue out of this. But that's besides the point. So what you would do, you would just treat this just like the feeler gauge. Cause this smoking with build barbecue card comes in at about 0 0.007, which is really within range. So you would treat it the same way. I can see here we're a little tight. So what you would do first, you take your lock nut. I don't know if you call it a lock nut or lock, whatever it is, 
loosen that sucker up and we do it just like you had an official feeler gauge slide it down in there and then you just do it till it gets tight you know maybe a little tighter on the car because i noticed the card's a little thicker than what your fuel gauge would do but there you go and tighten that sucker up and guys this is a lawnmower motor you're not dealing with a nascar motor so don't be super freaking anal about your valve lash clearances because i guarantee you that'll work just as good as the fuel gauge so i hope this helped out get your uh, valves put together it, it does help when you're having rough starting sometimes these uh these lashes get out of get out of whack so with that more mics out and stick around for some more fun